Yes, it is. We are live. Holy smokes. There um, we go. Yeah. So just so you know, Pi, with uh, the way you have your webcam set up, it pretty much looks like you're staring at me. I literally am staring at you. <laughs> No, I'm like really, but see how you're going sideways and I'm just looking straight forward. It really looks like you're just like staring right at me. Well, I could do this. You could do that. I think that might be a little bit better, but I do feel important if you stare at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like I'm literally the boxes are okay. Yeah. You see what's going on. I got it. You see what's I'm going on. Slow today, dude. Yeah. This has been a rough morning. <laughs> been a rough morning. We have people coming in. Um, if you guys are joining us, we have three minutes until we get started. We are talking about selling more printed products with Andrew Funderberg. Um, and we're going to start in three minutes, but this is a great time to kind of say hi in the chat room and to know that when we go live, we want you guys to talk, to chat, to let us know when you have questions and that kind of stuff. Let yeah, us man. know where you're hailing from. Can I, can I tell you a couple stories? Absolutely. So... Um, my favorite thing is one of my favorite things uh, is to hear photographers' successes, right? How they've, you know, they're changing or they're working on their businesses and the successes they have. And so basically, basically two things in the world matter to me. One is that people print more stuff so that our kids and grandkids have stuff around. And number two is that everybody's successful in their own way, mm -hmm. no matter what that is, right? You know, you have kids, I have kids. I want the kids to be successful in whatever they want, way they want to be successful. For sure. So I love it when photographers commit to print and then see immediate results in their business. Yeah. So one of our new customers, uh, Miguel, he has a busy studio in Florida and pretty, it was, you know, pretty pretty good volume, the number of weddings. And, and, and then he started doing portraits more and, um, he went from almost no portrait sales to averaging $3,000 a portrait sale. Yeah. Yeah. And the, just, the overnight, thing, just by showing things. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing too, is that, um, people, I think a lot of photographers are scared and, and we even get this in our studio where people are scared of the term sales. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like when this process is done right, there is very little sales involved. It's yeah. really more education. It's more like guiding them from start to finish. And then at the very end, do you present a price? And there's not even a sale or like a push there. It's just here is the price for what that would be. If you want to walk away with this, then this is what it would cost. And it's done. Like like the selling was done throughout this entire experience. Not It's not a push sell. Exactly. So it's one of those things that like when people are incorporating it right, it's very simple, very easy to do after you get this framework down and it is awesome. By the way, what's up, Scott? Scott from Los Angeles, Love SR Lounge and Fundy. Yeah, bubble. What, I, 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 I. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. You're Ryan, awesome. We're not going to let so Pi again. talk much this webinar. No. <laughs> it, it was a late night followed by an early morning followed by not enough of the things in between. <laughs> um, Ryan, what's up brother from Spokane, Washington. I freaking love Washington. Such a beautiful state. Okay. It is 10 AM right now. So we are going to go live. We have quite a few people registered for this and people showing up. We want to let you guys know I'm here with Andrew Funderberg of Fundy software. And, uh, we're going to be talking about selling more printed product and what that looks like from a design standpoint, what that looks like from a client standpoint, what that looks like from basically post-processing. So Andrew is our amazing guest who has tons of great information and uh, we're gonna be sharing quite a bit with you guys. If you guys have questions, if you guys want to know certain things, again, ask them. This is why we're doing webinar, webinar jam webinars versus like regular webinars because we want you guys to participate and be on board with it. So, all right, what's up, Ty? Tyson's here. Um, Allie from Fundy's here. Hey, Ty, what's up? All right. So, Fundy, you want to take it away, brother? So, so yeah, yeah, so let's do kind of a little walkthrough. I know that um, Ty sent great, great photos so over. over. Um, I'm getting a little. Is everybody else going to hear an echo on me, or is that just me? I think that might just be you. You're okay, good. On my that's side. good. All right, it's all good. 
I just turned my sound down a little bit. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and pull up a uh, funny designer here in just a little bit, but um, I want to concentrate on four of the features. Is it better now? Uh, Ali says I was echoing, but uh, she says it's better now. Am I echoing for you, Pi, or is it all good? I, I'm okay. I have my volume turned down fairly low, though, just so I can barely hear you. But Okay. Um, well, we'll just, we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes. She'll let me know. Um, Brian said good now. Shivy said good now. Okay. Yeah. So there was a huge echo. So basically I turned my, um, I turned my sound down on my computer. So maybe I was getting, um, some echo off of, of that. There you go, brother. You're good. Okay. Now. All good. And the hair is cool. looking good and you're on point. Your eyebrows are done. Hair is, it's looking pretty good today. Yeah. Like doesn't look great every day, but I really, I got, I dialed in good hair day. So. I want to talk about four of the main features of Fundy Designer today. Um, one is is the wall art. We'll design some wall art, and uh, number two is the album design. And then I'd like to take a little look at the skin retouching. So Miguel, that I was telling you about, um, he has calculated that he's saving two hours per client in retouching now that the one click skin retouching is in there. That's crazy. And he has, you know, and he pays an assistant to do this. So he's like, sweet, she's, <laughs> I don't yeah. have to, you know, she doesn't work as much on retouching, gets to do other stuff. And then also, um, and I think this will be really important uh, for you guys at uh, Linger's Photography, especially with your um, portrait and um, in-studio portraits that you're doing. Uh, Anna Johnson, who does uh boudoir photography she's able to do same day boudoir reveals with fully retouched photos yeah right because she's able to do it in one click and that and it's already increased her profits mm -hmm. like her sales are up immediately just because that because the photos look better that's awesome so can you um oh there we go i was i was gonna say shivy's screen is kind of taking up some of the space so hopefully yeah. when you actually go to screen share it would yeah yeah, so we'll go to screen share here in a little bit. And um, so, so, and then the last thing is basically the order builder, builder to help build out your order uh, for your client. So awesome. So you can uh, have that printed invoice ready to go or PDF and then um, swipe the card and go. Well, that's, that's amazing. And if it's cool with you, I'd love to talk about one thing just in from the shooting standpoint. So guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking and it's weird looking at the camera right now because I like looking at Fundy when he's talking, but then. I get, this is like the worst angle too. It like shows up <laughs> version of right here. That's awesome. So he's going to be talking about the design side and how we take this and present to clients using Funding Designer. I'd love to talk to you guys about the shooting side and making sure that you guys have the right images going into these shoots. And we Which are going to have an entire course. Important. What's that? Which is hugely important. I know we talked a lot about this when I was down visiting. Um, yeah. And how... I don't want to take any words out of your mouth, but how once you um, s transition to selling more printed product, your entire studio changed the way that you guys shoot. Yeah, it's level. dramatically shifting the way that we shoot, um, which is honestly for a better thing. I mean, we, we create a better product now, but for a studio like ours where we have, you know, 60 shooters and it's a, it's a large business steering this ship takes a lot longer than, you know, say if you're just a solo studio, if you're just doing this on your own, you can literally implement everything that we're talking about tomorrow and, and be running with this. So it's been a really fun process for us, but the main failing point of the entire process, which by the way, I'll be honest, I hate the term IPS. I'm trying to come up with a different word for this versus in-person sales, because I feel like that's so not what this is. No. I'm still thinking about it. But in the meanwhile, we'll call it IPS. But the entire purpose from a shooting standpoint is this process will IPP. fail. What's that? Well, IPP, in-person present, in person presentation. And it sounds like, like IPP. It really is just presenting your work. You really want to just hear me say IPP? Online. I don't know. I IPP. That's terrible. That's, it is terrible. But that's terrible. It, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... So this process will will completely fall on its face when you're not shooting correctly. And the reason why is because you're gonna see in a little bit when we go to actually design out these different pieces of wall art, we need to have different images available to us 
from the exact same scene that are cohesive in look and feel. And I actually spent quite a bit of time with Fundy, just like bouncing things off of him at the beginning of this six months ago when we were implementing this process of like, how's this, how's this, until I could actually create a framework and structure for that. And what it came down to was teaching our shooters to simply remember in every single scene, you're going wide, medium, tight. And we've actually started incorporating this into our education to prepare all of you for this shift that we're gonna be presenting. So I'm gonna show you guys briefly just the- You know, what, um, uh, you know what's funny, that just reminded me. What's funny as we go through this process is that we're, we're basically all just relearning the fundamentals of how photography was taught 70 years ago, or yeah. 50 years ago. Because wide, medium, tight, like that's the mantra for photojournalism schools. Yeah, it's also the mantra in, in cinema. Like if you yeah. watch any any television show, yep. they start with a shot of the city, they go to the shot of the building, and then they go inside the building. Wide, medium, tight. Like every single thing follows that formula. Because, and it's funny how you get out of it when you're yeah. because that's what what's the what's the goal there? What are they trying to tell in a movie? Or well, the, the overall movie? story, like what's happening yeah. and where it's yeah. happening. So you tell a story. So if if we want to tell our client's story in print, then same thing. We're just we're just telling a better story. Yeah. Oh, Scott Madrigal, you down with IPP? Yeah, you know me. Yeah, <laughs> I love the dad humor, Scott. <laughs> I got lots of dad. Scott's humor. Scott's my favorite. I know. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and screen share. If that's cool, you find I'm gonna talk through kind of how we shot these images that mm -hmm. you're about to be working on, like the engagement yep. photos in Designer. So Great. is that cool if I walk through those? Yeah. So let's walk through that, and then I think uh, would be really interesting is all kind of uh, walk through some general concepts with wall art design with those Perfect. photos, and then we can kind of go through a process how we would present those to our clients. Awesome. 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 So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my screen share. So this is a sample engagement session. I'm going to show you guys a couple different things. And what we're going to do is we eventually are going to take a certain set of images. They're actually the five-star images. So if I narrow down to this set of five-star images, these are the ones that Funny's going to be using in a moment to put together a design um, with Funny Designer. Now, to get to this place, and what we have here is I want to kind of show you guys what we're trying to present. For this client, they wanted what they described, I mean, this is a very typical Chinese client of ours that would come in and say, look, I've done photographs in China and I don't like them. They don't like the way that they come out because they look fake and cheesy and it's not them, it's not their personalities. So we designed this entire shoot around what they would actually do. They love Laguna Beach, they live here in SoCal and they love going and walking along the beach and they said, what should we wear? And I said, well, just wear what you would casually wear, you know, dress on the slightly nicer side. So it's like, wear something that you're super comfortable with, something that you'd wear, but maybe something that you'd wear going out on like a little date night with mm -hmm. uh, your girl. Yeah, so, great. yeah, so it's like that way they're dressed just a little bit above, you know, like the sweatpants and chilling at home watching Netflix type look. But he's super comfortable, she's super comfortable. And then once we get out to the beach, we're just directing them and guiding them to do things that they would naturally do. For some reason, as soon as you bring up a camera, everybody stops doing what they would naturally do and they pose and they, they literally pose in front of you. And this is what our course on stop directing or stop, uh, stop taking pictures, start directing is all about on our complete posing workshop. It's all about directing, give the right guidance. And what we're essentially doing with each of these scenes, you can see, by the way, these are shot on the, um, I believe these were on the 5D Mark IV. And so I'm shooting for max dynamic range. So that way, when we pull these into post, we have a lot of flexibility. So even when we brighten these images up, we still have tone in the sky. So we brighten them up for that light and airy look, but we still have color and tone. And that's how you get that richness while maintaining um, your shadow quality. So, and by the way, funny, I can't see the webinar view from right now. So if you see a question or anything pop up, just let me know. Oh yeah, sure. Yep. So uh, looks looks good right now. Perfect. So what we've done is here's the raw file. And as I walk into the scene, I'm imagining what it is that we're gonna be putting up in the client's home. And this is all based upon a vision exercise, which we're gonna walk through in, in our coursework, but we'll give you guys an idea of what that vision exercise is here. But we essentially ask them a question to describe to us what is the single most important picture from whatever photographic experience they're about to have. And they'll tell you. And they actually said their favorite shot is either gonna be a epic, 
of Laguna Beach, or they had a walking in the sand shot where it showed their footprints that they actually pulled up on their mood board. They said, that's the one that, that we want. So we shot this image and you'll notice that it's shot vertically because I'm imagining this as a tall kind of piece that's gonna drive the, uh, the overall story that we're gonna be telling in the wall art. So as we're shooting, we're thinking about where we wanna go. So this is basically our wide shot. It showcases the scene, it showcases what's going on, the details of them walking, and then we move into other shots. So the mediums are gonna be shots like this, basically. These are medium shots. This is a medium shot. Okay. And then moving into tighter shots. So tight shots are going to be these where we kind of focus on expressions and getting in close to show details. And you can go even tighter. Like this isn't like you can go straight down to the hands. You can go into for close up expressions, but either way we need variety as we go into creating this piece of wall art, because if, for example, if I take four images that are roughly the same focal length and roughly the same type of shot and I put them next to each other, it looks too similar. They look too close to each other and they don't really necessarily tell a different part of that story. So this is where that wide medium type format comes in because we essentially want each piece to sort of tell a different part of our story just like you would in cinematic filmmaking in anything. So we end up with our final selection, which is gonna be this. And we do have room to actually crop. So these are 30 megapixel shots. We have room to crop in and to still get to a high resolution print. And that's what's beautiful about, you know, shooting full raw as opposed to shooting medium raw or small raw is that when you bring it into post, you can take this shot, for example, and if you wanna crop this down to a square, so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump to the develop module, press R, and bring this into a square. You could bring this into a square, crop right below the hip, and you have a beautiful high resolution close-up shot of the of the couple. So that's kind of the nicety of high resolution stuff these days. I know it's more cumbersome from a workflow standpoint, but from a printing and product standpoint, it really gives you a lot of flexibility. So hopefully that all makes sense in terms of how we shot this. Every single one of these shots, I believe, was taken on, actually these were 24 mil, these are 35 mil. One of my favorite lenses for these types of images. And I love, you notice that I love shooting the 24 and the 35 close, framing them kind of towards the center and getting open space around them, using the natural vignetting of the lens to kind of pull in and lead into the couple. And it showcases the background too. And it has that, very much has that like in the action kind of feel because you are literally in the action photographing it. So I love the look and feel of these lenses hey, and they work really I well. A, I for, have a question. Um, yeah. with, with photos like these, let's say, for example, go back to that one where they're in the center of the frame. Um, this and this one. is more of kind of a, more of an artistic question than a, than a technical question. Do you ever use the, um, I forget what is, is it the gradient density, um, tool that, that, uh, the one right next to it, sorry, the, the one right the next radio? to where you were, no, the next one to the left. What's that? Oh one yeah. Called? Gradient filter. Yeah, so the gradient filter um, to maybe start at the top left and pull that down so you could darken that top left sky a little bit. Would you would you ever do that yourself? I would totally do that. And these images yeah. have been processed. So if we look at the uh, so let's let's take a look at the before on this. So this is the raw file. Yep. And so we're shooting it for just max tone. And this is probably one stop under where it should have been. Um, and this was when we were testing out the five D four. I was like doing a little bit of leeway and testing. Yeah. But you'll notice that we do have radial filters mm -hmm. that are basically controlling to pull down the outer edges by one stop by however yeah. much we need. Mm -hmm. And depending on the look and feel for it, if you wanted to burn down the left side, absolutely grabbing a, a, a graduated filter. Mm -hmm. And this is from the, the preset system. We have everything basically designed in so you can go and do whatever retouch you need. But grabbing just a quick exposure brush and pulling down from the left side to, to deepen and darken that a little bit. Totally something that we would do. I think it's a matter of like with each of these, there's so much leeway in terms of um, where you want to take post. Mm -hmm. and as long as like the, the 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 look of the image has similar color, similar tonality, and everything like that. Depending on some people like to leave their skies totally blown out. If you look at this image and we press J, you'll notice that there's there's actually nothing blown or clipped in the shot. It's very soft. We have all the tonality in the sky, and the highlight and clipping alert tells us that there's nothing blown and there's nothing. So we will have tone but I kind of intentionally left the, uh, the skies very bright with this mm -hmm. centerpiece. You'll notice that the sky kind of pulls into them. It's a little bit brighter right behind them. 
So that way our eyes kind of drop into the center. Yep. Totally. But yeah, depending on how much you want to go, I left everything in the scene super bright, including this shot, which is why I didn't burn down the skies too much in each of the other shots. Yep. So I kind of left the sky exactly where it was in each of these. And you'll see like this shot, if I press J, the only thing blown here is just a little bit of the sun and a little bit of the water. Everything else is completely retained. Cool beans. Cool, man. Anybody have any questions on like how we kind of approached it and how we shot it? When it comes to the actual, like what we're shooting here, I literally told them to hold hands get close to the water. And as the water's coming up, I want you to run along the water's edge and I'm just moving along with them with the 24 mil and just shooting through as they're, as they're playing and having fun and just kind of framing it. So that the sun's like directly above them, leading into them and leaving, you know, room in the frame a little bit. This one cropped a little bit tighter. Like when you're in the motion or in the, in that scene, sometimes you end up with shots that are not perfect crops. They're not perfect. Anything like they're, but it's, such a great like in the moment type shot that the imperfection kind of lends itself to making mm -hmm. it feel more natural. That's why for this first shot, we can clearly see the horizon line and we're starting this run. So I kept it straight for the second shot. I wanted this to have this feel of like kind of a haphazard way of capturing the image, you know, like it's like, okay, we're moving, we're shaking and we're along in the action. And so I left the horizon crooked because it lends to that whole, in action kind of look that's that's what dutch angle is designed to do is create a sense of action or create a sense of anxiety here we're using it to create a sense of action but in the other shots where it's more calm and relaxed we bring the horizon line back to a flat line so that way it's not drawing attention to the shot yeah and i think i think that's an important point when we look at at shooting for what the client wants to buy i just did a couple shoot and one of their favorite photos was um, a shot of just their feet and they both had this kind of cute action with their feet. Like the, the, the woman had her, her, you know, one heel up, you know, one foot on her toe and the, the horizon of where the, the street or the sidewalk met the wall behind it was not straight. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, accentuated the cuteness of the photo and it was one of it was it's a close-up of their feet right it was one of the larger images in the cluster that they purchased yeah no it's important to realize that like every one of these tools a crooked horizon a off you know using a wide angle lens up close all these things have a purpose and so long as they're done with purpose it looks cohesive and it looks correct you, you imagine like it's normally not good to have shaky video right shaky video is generally a bad thing and we have all these stabilizers to go and make video not shaky. Yeah. Then you go and watch Born Identity and like every single shot is handheld and shaky as all heck. And But you get this sense of like, holy crap, it's so raw and in the action. And so that's kind of what I try and encourage people to do is line up every one of these things from the way that you compose and shoot to the lens selection, to the way that you light, to the overall effect that you're trying to create for your clients. So. I know people want to dive into the actual layouts and what yeah. you can do inside of designer. So why don't we jump into that, buddy? Okay. So just to segue into that, I would like to express um, that Born Identity is one of the most awesome films ever. Right. So um, let's. I would like to just kind of begin with that. Um, I don't know if that is. We can end with that pertinent too. at all. <laughs> all right. So let me go ahead and uh, hop on the screen share. Coming through on my end. Uh, everybody can still hear me and all that. We're good. I love Mark's comment about shooting for the client versus shooting for the photographer. And that's, that's absolutely correct. It's shooting for the final look um, and shooting for the final product versus mm -hmm. shooting to impress your peers. And yeah. And um, I think uh, at oftentimes they're at odds with each other. Yeah, they will be. They will completely yeah. be at odds with each other because every one of my favorite shots of me and my kids has mm -hmm. nothing to do with the way that it's lit has nothing to do with the perfect composition yep. it has to do with that moment. Um, there. Okay. So here let's go. Um, so what I wanted to do here is kind of talk about the principles of wall art design, right? Uh, and then we can dive in and then let's design uh, a cluster for um, 
those images that that we just talked about pi and we'll design that cluster um for the way lynn Jersa would design it and then we'll save that out as a design as an example of how people can build out their own wall designs and then we'll go through like a mock client presentation cool this is perfect and real quick joe had a question that i'd missed um all mm -hmm. the raw files are several stops underexposed to retain dynamic range joe yes so basically we just look at the histogram and maximize the histogram from left to right on those shots um, there were certain shots that when it was getting darker, I probably forgot and they ended up being one stop under. But yeah, we shoot to, in a scene like that, to retain dynamic range. And then we we use post to basically decide on where we're going to go with it. So I do a lot of education and that's why I'll shoot that way because later I might want to show how we can post process an image to look completely different. And we could shoot a bright and area and blow everything out, but then we only have one option when it comes to post and how we're going to post process it. Whereas when they're shot to maximize dynamic range, we can literally take it anywhere. By the way, now that we're in designer, I do want to make this mention. So uh, because a lot of people might, this might be the first time that they're seeing designer. What Fundy has pulled up right now in his piece of software is the this design gallery view where essentially you can choose a room layout and you take the images and it's you're actually designing right onto this wall. And we use this um inside of our design gallery so we actually have a specific room set up with a projector and we have a 12 foot projection of what fundy is seeing here onto the wall in front of where the clients are sitting we're gonna have a video on that and kind of guide you through this entire process as we go but it's this is how we help our clients to understand our vision for these pieces of art in their home and you can even replace this background with an actual picture of their home which is something we talk about doing at the very end of the process just so that we don't we're not mm -hmm. bogged down by kind of all the clutter in the home as we're going and designing we'll design with these views first right in front of the client and you'll see just how powerful it is in helping them to establish a vision our vision for what we want these photographs to be so um so I'd like to talk about a little bit. So when we're shooting and we're designing uh, wall clusters, we we're we're basically designing something for we're for people's home, right? So uh, one of the things I wanted to back up to kind of simplify the concept of this because I think a lot of photographers get caught up in in you know we we see on forums oh what should my photography look like, and then we're shooting for photographers instead of shooting for the clients that we just discussed. But then we're like, oh, what should my wall clusters look like? And we look at um, the you know clusters that are made on our lab's website or this and that. But all we're doing is designing clusters that would look good in their client's home. Yeah. Right. So the, the general concept is we want to, can everybody see my mouse here? Yep. So the general concept, if we select all of these, this you is got a little bit quiet, funny. Can you talk louder? Yeah. So uh, this is here. I can I can turn up my mic just a little bit. Does that help? Is that good? Yes. Okay. So here, when I select all of these, we see this is roughly a uh, a rectangle, right? And then as we go to the next room, uh, same thing, a little bit bigger rectangle, or maybe almost a square is shape and here we have a large rectangle in the room right here we have uh basically a square and so the the concept and then here we have basically a trapezoid going up the wall right and what you're so, also seeing right now is these are um a lot of these are unprocessed images so when you're actually putting these together, you would process them to look similar in tone. Yeah. So, uh, so the concept is to design something that is going to look great on your client's wall. So we have to think about, you know, when you have trapezoids that will go up and down staircases, we have, um, you know, a square that will look great above a stand up piano, a big rectangle that'll look great above a dining room table or a, a sofa. Right, so that's the reason that we're we're doing these. So let's go ahead now, and here are those final photos uh, that we've that uh, you processed. So let's go ahead and design, um, and I will have Pi basically tell me what to do to make this the design that they um, would 
sell at SLR at uh, Lindursa Photography, and then I'll design it for you so you guys can kind of see how that process is to design your own um, layouts. And additionally, at any time you want to, you can pop open um, the the auto layouts, right? So there's auto, always the auto layouts if you get stuck. Perfect. Right. But let's go ahead and design uh, what you guys would do. Well, so our so we do all of our printing through Bay Photo, and one of my favorite pieces, probably one of our best sellers, um, which we're featuring uh, in one, a video that we're doing, is the this kind of timeless film strip style layout. Mm -hmm. And so the film strip style layout is a large center piece with two images, two square images on each side. So I shot that foot shot, the one that leads up to them, to be a nice kind of rectangular or square piece that can go yep. in the center. So let's make that the large center piece. The, this one? The, yep. The, uh -huh. This one right here? Yep. And Perfect. you want that to be square? Let's do, um, just to keep it. Either way, I'll let you pick okay. if you want it to be square. What, if you want si to be, what size would you like it to be? Um, let's make that like, actually, can we do a, a vertical 20 by 30 or whatever you want to do? Yep. So here, um, let's, do, let's do a 36 by 24. 24 by 36. Got my math wrong. Perfect. There we go. So there's a and then I, I shot, so the image wider, the one that's on the bottom right now of them running, yep. I wanted that to be on the top left to kind of show this little thing in motion. So we showed that one and then the following closer up shot of them running with them holding hands right below that one. Okay. And maybe we'll shift this uh, funny. Let's do those as squares mm -hmm. that fit within. There we go. Perfect. That's so yeah, fantastic. We'll bring, uh, to a square. So what I like to do, so here's 24. And the great thing about Bay Photo is they'll do custom sizes for pretty much the same price as regular sizes. Yes. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a 21. I think it will. For canvases, they do that. Um, oh, wait, for no, other 21. products. I'm sorry. So what's 33, 36 divided by two? That's 18. So 18, I want to do, so I want to do like a 17 by 17. Okay. And so the goal is one of the great, one of the important things to remember with wall art is that the tighter the spacing, the less space between the photos with collections, the better because yeah. If the spacing is really wide, then clients will see those as separate, um, separate canvases or metals, and then they want to. Then they'll say, "Oh, can I just get the middle one?" Totally. And just to demonstrate this function real quick, funny, can you take the top left photo and mm -hmm. don't crop off the shoulder? There you go. Perfect. So the beautiful part about this is, as you guys can see, like while we are, while we have our clients there, we can swap photos in and out. We can change the size of these. We can do anything that we want with that, with these images directly in front of them. And so as they see, and, and Scott made, made this mention, Scott Madrigal said, I think the biggest thing holding you back from IPS or IPP, yeah, none of us IPP, okay, um, <laughs> is not having the space to be able to bring people in that wows them and have great samples to show them. I feel like that's a giant first step. And Scott, you're kind of absolutely right on that. Now, the thing is that you don't necessarily need a huge space. You can do this in a home with a room that's well laid out for um, IPS, but there has to be examples of this. You have to bring them into a place where you can share this vision. And it could be your home. A lot of people do it inside of their home. Mm -hmm. But without that, um, it, it does fall a little bit short because seeing this up on the wall is is amazing. And then what happens in our design gallery is as Fundy's putting this together and they're sitting there watching it and they're looking at it, they look to the left and to the right sides and they're surrounded by incredible prints. And so it holds them in this whole kind of vision of what we have for you know, their, their own home. Yeah, but I would like also to encourage Scott to just jump in. I know some people that are making great sales out of their car. 
they drive Absolutely. to the client's home and they have a small projector and then they have a small projection screen. Absolutely. And, and gets, you know, gets do the best with what you have and get started and then take that money and put it towards getting a, a consult the design consult space absolutely. or maybe find a studio that rents you know by the hour or something so that you can bring them in and build that out or a shared studio space or something um because you can you can totally do it in your client's home and that's an easy place to start or your own home and then you build from there yeah and i would say scott the we we're doing another case study on these projectors that we're using we're using the the canon wx 500 um, that's probably going to be one of your best investments. Uh, it's about 3,500 bucks, but you can take that into a client's home and project onto a wall and create this experience inside of their own home, which would be absolutely incredible. And the other thing too, is understand that 95% of this entire process occurs before we sit down for this design consultation. So Scott, if you're missing, if you're missing the pieces that lead into like helping them to establish that vision, a gallery, all this kind of stuff. Just make sure that previous 95% is all intact. The experience itself, the images that you're capturing, the presentation of those images, all of that needs to be there. And if it's there, like like Fundy said, you could be doing this out of the car. Yeah. And or even uh, Ali brought up Skype. Um, yeah. A local photographer to us uh, a couple months ago did a $6,600 wall art sale over Skype. Just like I'm sharing my screen here, they share their screen with their client and then go through the whole process. Yep. So let's so so we've we've created this design. Let's say we want to save this design and use it over and over again. Right? So I'm gonna click the little pin icon. I'm gonna click save to collections. And uh, we'll we'll name this the the I and then we'll price that to whatever that would be. And I'm going to click save. And now this collection is available to use at any time. Awesome. Right. So uh, we would be able to say clients in there, they go through, choose their favorites. Let's go back into the layouts, choose this layout because I, because they like that one from the preview that we did. And then we can just drop those in. Right. And then let's say that's what they wanted to order. We can go ahead and click add to order. Here's my gallery. It's going to pull up that price automatically. We can put in any notes, you know, we can put in a note to the retoucher, you know, enhance the sky or whatever you want to put in that order. And then that's added to the client order. Awesome. So any, any questions on that, on just designing your own wall galleries and then saving them out? Uh, because then now I'll kind of jump in and, and go kind of through the client process. Very cool. Um, I'd say we jump into that client process. And while you're doing that, I want to show Ty one quick thing. He was asking this question mm -hmm. earlier. Back to knowing your camera and what that camera can do. Um, a 5D3 was great. A 5D4 is even better. A D800, D810, D650, like a D750. Those are all ridiculous cameras when it comes to dynamic range. So the main thing is, is if I reset this out, you can see the original histogram. So this original histogram shows everything is pushed. So we have shadows and we have our highlights. Everything is retained, right? So when I undo that reset and you zoom into these shadows, you're not really going to see much noise going on. It looks fantastic. It looks fine. Everything looks great. What's going to be a problem is if, if you underexpose to the point where you're clipping shadows. So if the exposure was one stop lower, like down here, that's where we're actually clipping and we're losing shadows, as you can see over on this right side. At that point, you will introduce a lot of noise and grain into a shot. But in a shot where you're simply maximizing dynamic grain, just like this, we're trying to capture every bit of it. And again, you will always err to the right, right? So ETTR, if you're going to expose a little bit brighter, expose to the right. So your highlights being a slightly blown looks better 
then your shadow's being clipped. But again, you look at this shot and you look at how deep and dark the shadows are and the way that it's processed, there's not really noise to be had here. It'll print fine as a 40 by 60, which is, that's what it is downstairs. So it really comes down to knowing your camera, knowing how far you can push the dynamic range and extreme underexposure as long as it's done right will still yield, you know, great shadows. All good? Yep. All right, so let's go, oops, du, 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 let me share my screen here. Uh, a few wall pieces here, right? So we have some wall pieces designed um, and uh, I've found and seen a lot of feedback being able to show client already designed wall pieces as examples right from the get go activates their imagination and makes them want it more. Right. So then, then we're working towards a goal really easily. So yeah. I'm going to pop open the client view. So this is the client view window. And if you're on a projector or if you're on Skype, this would be the window that you would be sharing with your clients while you would keep that design view on your own screen so that you can make changes behind the scenes and kind of work quickly with them. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll start off with a little slideshow. Now, one of the things that you can do is if you wanted to, let's say you had 60 photos, but maybe you didn't want to show all 60 photos in the slideshow. You could favorite with the heart icon, maybe 25, and then you could do a slideshow of just the favorites if you wanted to, to kind of shorten that down and not give everything away at the beginning. Um, you can also bring in your own audio, change the background color, display time, et cetera. Um, and then there's a bunch of free music from Triple Scoop Music in there, right? So we're gonna start off with a slideshow, right? And so you can easily see Scott, the power of just being able to pull this up and do this over Skype, just like we're doing right now, right? We're, we're presenting, I'm presenting to you guys just like I could present to a client. Yeah, to give everybody a heads up and an idea of this, um, each of our design consultations starts with this slideshow and we'll put some of them, you know, we even sometimes we'll just queue up some good music in the room, like the stuff that we know that they love. Mm -hmm. We'll start with the slideshow and then we go directly into showing them already designed wall art and already designed again, like funny said, kicking off their imagination versus sitting there to design something in front of them. We only get to the design stuff when we're fine tuning. And then, um, if you want to, you can follow up with this, um, and I think, Pi, I think your team's really going to love the slideshow enhancements that we're going to push out in the fall where you're going to be able to mix and match albums and wall art and photos within a slideshow. That'll be really cool. So um, then we can go in and we can do a slideshow of the wall art designs. And I think this is what's really powerful. And usually we slow way down on this one, um, change the timing to about five seconds so they can really focus on that wall art. One of the things that I, I love about the, I think funny you, you talked to me about this, you know, the idea of using their own home as the background is great and all. Um, but you, you mentioned like people don't generally keep their homes in super nice fashion. And what would happen yeah. with us is you go and you take this home and you put it as a background and you blow it up to 12 feet and you can see socks and all these things lying around. <laughs> Dust bunnies. It, yeah. It creates kind of a sense of anxiety when they're looking at it and seeing all the things that they have to do. So we don't actually design onto the wall of their home until like the very end of the process where we just say, okay, let's just show you what that would look like. Just to confirm the size. Just to confirm right. the size. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because just like, um, just like you said, I, I did, um, uh, I was actually at a workshop, so I did like a real shoot and consult with, with a couple and they sent me a photo of their, their house, but it was, it's not, it wasn't a pretty photo. And this yeah. guy is actually a really good amateur photographer. It was not a good photo. Yeah. So just like Pi said, pull, just pulling that up at the very end, just to confirm um, that it will fit on their wall. Yeah. Just to make sure we got the right size. And that's kind of that reassurance for them. And we for should sure. we should know that it will fit before they, we get to that step. We, you don't want to 
<laughs> we like we should know how big their wall is and stuff before we get to that step so we don't make that mistake. For sure. Um, funny, by the way, we have about 19 minutes. Okay. All right. So go through that process and then we're going to go through and they can choose their favorites. Right. So to choose the favorites, we're just going through one by one and just hit the F key to make a favorite. You notice the little heart went red. We have our favorites and then we can go back to our screen. We would, this would be on a, on a different monitor so they could still keep this up. And then we would mock up exactly what we just did with their favorite photos. Right. And so those are added into there. Then we can go through and we can ask if they would like any photos for grandma. Right. So maybe uh, they want a five by seven for grandma. This one, maybe they want, uh, you know, maybe the husband would like a, an eight by 10 for his office. And we're building out this entire order right here. And then at any time we can click that view order, obviously pull in your own logo and all of your pricing, taxes, discounts, legal agreement, place for that client to sign is all right there for you. Just in case anybody misses the chat so we can talk about this, Scott had a really great question. He said, Pi, what does lenders do to make sure that the investment your clients make actually ends up on the walls? How do you follow up? Um, so anybody watching the replay that doesn't see the chat, we, uh, we include white glove installation with every purchase of wall art. So again, if they're spending 2,500 bucks, 3000 bucks on this, you know, the actual cost of the wall art isn't crazy. Um, it's not, it's not like a, a ton of money to throw in white glove installation for 150 bucks and make that like kind of a value add where you have a professional going to their home and setting it up for them. Because again, the entire, our entire experience is designed off of, we want to create an experience similar to what you'd feel when you walk into go buy a Louis Vuitton purse or a Bentley car where it's a full concierge service, as opposed to going and buying something and getting, you know, halfway through a product, like ha getting half services. Yep. So the stuff never sits in their home because it's, we'll, we'll go set it up for them. And we went through this kind of quickly, but then obviously if you go to uh, fundy.com slash support, uh, go to our video tutorials, we have a bunch of walkthroughs. There's a bunch of walkthroughs called how to triple your studio sales that are me with other local photographers going through step by step. And they're really powerful because we go through step by step if you have a studio consultation room or if you're using Skype or if you're going to the client's home. All right, so let's go back and uh, let me share with you the process of what you would do for a wedding. So this is basically an engagement shoot or a portrait. Fam this process is the same for a family portrait session. Process is the same for, uh, you know, baby, high school seniors, etc. So what about the process for uh, a wedding? So let me go back in here. We have a wedding loaded. Wes, I would highly recommend see. He said, I purchased more albums a while back. I know it sucks, dude, but it's it's worth getting designer. It'll save you um, a lot of time. You'll, you'll, you'll make your money back in your first sale. Um, so here, so let's go through. So we have 100 photos. So with weddings, you really want to design the album first and present it to the client versus with a portrait, you're getting their feedback of what photos they like and then building out a design for them. So let's go ahead and we have a hundred photos. So let's go ahead, let's design a 60 page album. So I'm going to start with, um, just the auto design to get a rough draft done. Boom. Auto design is my favorite thing in the world. It's the best. I love having a place to start with, you know, like not having to like just kind of start from scratch with every single yeah. one of these. So, uh, so, you know, you would design the album and then from here, you, we won't go through and make all of the final adjustments, but you know, you can change your page orders. Uh, we check the timestamps of the photo. So everything's in order, you know, for example, here we have black and white in color. Maybe we would like to change this photo to black and white also, right? So we have consistency. Maybe we want to flip that. So well, it's funny how like you can just quickly tweak that design. Like, let's say 
we're showing a little bit too much of the one image and not enough of the other, how you can easily just pull out one edge and match it all. Um, oh, so, you know, just like a full manual, like let's yeah, say maybe like just, you want to do this the and then like snap and put that one down here and then. Exactly. exactly. Like this is, I, I don't know. I, I know that for you, it's like, okay, yeah, duh, it does that. But for me, it's like, holy crap, like it's that. Pretty crazy. I mean, look at, look at that. Yeah. Um, you can swap a vertical and a horizontal and yeah. auto adjust. So this is, this is our, our patent. Um, pretty, pretty crazy. Um, oh, so Ali, um, you, you guys had an older coupon code. So Ali just said, we're actually running a $50 sale on our website. So Ali upped, upped it. Um, this is only for people attending live, but if you use webinar 75 today, you can get $75 off. That's awesome. And Brian had a question. How about exporting your entire album directly through a vendor like Bay Photo, Miller's, or WHCC? Yeah. So let's go. I want to show one more design example. So let's uh, let me scroll down to a, a spread with with a few images on it. So whenever you're in a design, you can always go to our quick design picker and there's over a hundred different configurations right here. And you can see these kind of auto updating and you can kind of auto update within here. We can flip all of the layouts. So the main image is on the right side. And so a ton of choices there, right? And then at any time we can obviously move these photos around. You can swap between spreads, which I know with a lot of other programs is not possible. Uh, or not easy. Um, so for export, so we have, um, for most, the majority of labs, we have all of the sizes for about 130 different labs. And for, let me, uh, let me go ahead and turn the webcam on here. Hundred and thirty plus labs. We have all of the sizes in there. Um, so you would just export. We export at all of the um, uh, all of the sizes and the bleed lines and cut lines are in there for all of the labs. Like I just designed this for uh, blacksmith albums, and you just export and order through them. Um, we do have a few direct to order labs. So in the United States, those include Miller's, um, Renaissance. Fineo, Design Aglow, and Lush Albums. For those, you can order direct to the lab. So for example, like um, Miller's lab, their turnaround time is like three days for their album. So you can order direct from the software and boom, it comes right back. So that's the... Which we have not yet is the in application skin retouching and this will be a perfect one here so we see some wrinkles here i hope it picks up because we only see the side of her face yeah it did a little bit that one looks like it's already retouched a little bit but you could see the retouching a little bit there let's see if we have do we have a straight shot on the bride here oh here we go let's do All right, so let's you can you'll see her eyes just kind of pop here, and a little. So we have a little bit more skin retouching and face slimming, and I make the eyes pop. The under eyes go down quite a bit, and you have full control right here. So that's that's that in application skin retouching that I talked about, and that can save a ton of time. And with a busy studio like Lynn Jersa, what it does is it enables the designers to take that fundy project and just hand it off to the retouchers and they can do one click and then anything that's maybe a little bit more intensive they can right click open in photoshop use the spot healing brush or something like that um, but that in application skin retouching saves a ton of time that's rad that's really cool um i did want to also mention uh wes um Wes said that he would, you know, he's going to have to wait for, you know, to, to, to make the purchase. So 
guys, if you can't take advantage, 75 bucks is a great deal. If you can't take advantage of that, I know a lot of you guys are premium members and we have um, discounts available for funding inside of premium. They're not as big, but I think you can get 50 bucks off um, with your membership. So this is, uh, by the way, this is awesome. <laughs> perfectly clear. <laughs> yeah, perfectly clear is crazy. Um, so I know we went through a lot. Um, you know, what we really focus here is um, Brian asked, is there a list of all the companies that you're available to export to? Yeah, if you go to our website and click on the partners page, but um, I would challenge you to find any professional lab that's not in there. I mean, it's 130 plus worldwide. And then you can always put in custom, a custom size if you didn't, if, if you don't. Yeah. Um, Scott had another great point and Wes addressed it spot on with limiting your options. Scott asked, um, another huge issue for me is the number of options available to us, album sizes, types, covers, papers, etc. How do you guys choose what you like personally and, and what you offer to your clients? Um, this is a great topic and I spent probably just a month, um, on designing out what products we were going to offer for our studio about six months ago. Um, and here's the thing with our studio is I simplify the process down to it's the exact same price. We offer like say four to five different total layout options. It's the exact same price, whether they choose a metal, a canvas or a frame. So it doesn't matter what they choose. It's the same price. And guys, we're going to walk through all this stuff. Um, premium membership is designed for SR lounge is designed to get you guys going and off the ground and to give you ongoing education to keep helping you become better. And that's where all of our education is basically going is helping you to run and manage a studio. We're going to have that content coming. We put out a course with Fundy. Uh, actually, it's going to be released soon that talks about this process in depth from the sales and client interaction perspective, which is awesome. Um, but from our product standpoint, we make it super simple. We have it's if they want a five piece timeless uh, um, setup, just like the one that we designed, it's one single price. It doesn't matter if they go slightly smaller or slightly bigger. We're pricing the piece of art, not the size of the art. It doesn't matter if they're doing frames, canvases, or metal. We're not selling frames, canvases, or metal. We're selling the art. Yeah. So it's all the same price. And we take away every single option that they would have and limit it down to just what we want to be giving them. Because you all know that decision paralysis that comes in when you go... You walk into, well, now you don't walk into Blockbuster anymore, but even you walk over to, uh, you, you, I go and check out and I grab my food and I go, I want to uh, see what movies are available on, um, what is it, Redfin or whatever, or not Redfin, uh, Redbox. Mm -hmm. And even with that limited selection, I'm usually there for like five minutes and I'm like, well, I can't really see anything that I really want, so I'm just going to go. I don't know how many times I've gone through and flipped through all the pages and been like, ah. Uh, there's not really anything I want, but if they presented one option with a great image and you're like, Oh man, that does look good. That's such an easy decision. You know what I mean? So, so take that decision process onto yourself, decide what you want to deliver, what fits you and give them a very small set of products to choose from. So the rule, the, the great rule of thumb that I heard, I've heard about pricing and products is that if you can't remember them all and be able to communicate to their to your client without a piece of paper, then you have too many options. Yeah. Right. You I, should be I able to, agree. you should be able to have all of your pricing memorized. Yeah. I mean, if you just like, I could talk about sales and this kind of psychology all day long. Cause I, yeah. I really do love and I'm passionate about this kind of stuff, but you think about buying like a Honda Accord, it's an exhaustive process where you're just like, okay, what options do I need? Which package should I go with? What upgrades do I want? And you're also, once you even decide on those things, you spend another four to six hours there just doing the paperwork. That is the exact opposite experience of what you're trying to create with something concierge and boutique. You want them to walk in, have a small set of products to choose from and have literally everything done for them. That's what your clients are going to be looking for. Yep. Totally. So. Was there anything else that you wanted to present, Fundy? I think that's it. So the core is, I mean, you, you guys saw I was able to do a uh, 60 page album with 100 photos, mostly done in five minutes, um, be able to present your wall art. 
So the key is, even if people aren't doing portrait sessions, if you're a wedding photographer, you're doing an engagement session. And that's a great opportunity to make two to $3,000 in wall art. Totally. And right. I feel like, honestly, for us, outside of the wedding side is where we sell more wall art. So we sell more wall art when we are doing engagements, families, newborns, maternity, that kind of stuff versus weddings. We do sell some with weddings, um, but for weddings, it's really about the album. Like the album is where it's at when it comes to weddings. And sometimes we'll get clients to walk away with a piece um, or two pieces, but the portrait sessions are incredible. So, so somebody had a question on being able to um, work offline without being connected to the internet. Yes. The only time you have to be connected to the internet when using Fundy Designer is that very first time that you log in when you're registering your copy. Other than that, you can be, uh, and then obviously you need to be connected to the internet when you order your album, uh, either through us or through your album manufacturer. Um, but uh, most clients will work offline, um, especially in the client consultation room, because you, you, you're better off just turning off your internet when you're when you're in that client consultation room, so you don't have any notifications popping up, etc. So you can totally be disconnected. Perfect. Yeah, I really, uh, I, I'm really. Um, people put the coupon code in there. I'm really excited. Uh, I just did a one day workshop that I think might be fun if I flew down there with you guys and did it with you guys that so we could film it pie um, where kind of that we did the whole process from pricing, creating your collections, creating your pricing of your albums. Um, and then uh, we did an entire client consult, client shoot, edit, presentation, retouch and order that client to beginning to end interaction was just two hours long mm -hmm. total, including the shoot. So showing how much is possible in a short amount of time, not saying that you have to do everything in two hours, but it's amazing what you can accomplish yeah. in just a couple hours. Scott has an incredible question, which um, it's something that I think we're going to, it's a really great question that I want to build into our, our courses, but and Wes also asked when our IPS course is coming out. The Fundy webinar that he did, um, that'll be out probably in the next month or so, and that'll give you guys a really great foundation. We record that webinar with Fundy, or sorry, not a webinar, we record, uh, record a seminar with Fundy. He flew down and did this with our entire team. We record that so that we'd have something to present to you guys quickly. Um, the All the official IPS guidance and training systems and everything that we're doing, we're gonna be releasing over time um, as we're basically developing and implementing and perfecting these processes. But right now um, I have a full course on sales that's done. It's basically how it's how to close $10,000 clients. And that's the one that I'm trying to get Chris to, to green light right now. Cause I'm really excited about that. But a um, couple things. So Scott asked, imagine you're going to do IPS tomorrow from being a shoot and share online gallery with file downloads. What's step one for you? This is such a great question because this is exactly where we were six months ago and we're still in the process of getting out of it. So granted for you, Scott, it's going to be probably quicker uh, than it is, has been for us. But step one is to start with the vision exercise. Um, we will detail out that vision exercise in the funding webinar and we'll go into more depth on it as we go forward in the sales courses and so forth. But that's essentially, Bringing in the IPS process directly in that first meeting is step number one, because for all the clients that you've already shot and for all the clients that you've already worked with and for all the clients that have already booked, even if you haven't photographed them yet, they're not probably going to fall into this kind of category. You might get a few of them to come in and buy something here and there, but those are clients that hired you expecting digitals and downloads and converting them is not necessarily going to be worth your time. So the first step is to actually work going forward and to incorporate this immediately into your presentations at the beginning. And the vision exercise is basically that exercise that um, I can't tell how many places we've talked about it yet because I feel like I've talked about it nonstop, but I don't know if everybody online has seen it yet. But it's basically a process of finding out what is the one most important image that the client is hiring you for and then building the entire meeting around that and that emotion and that feel. 
And funny, you did cover that in your seminar, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, we did cover that. I think we did a couple examples um, okay. with with your staff members. I, I can't remember if we did one or two, but yes, we did. Okay. Um, and and it's uh, a little bit more emotional, but basically, it's just asking them what they love about their loved ones and where they would like to see that in their home, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's 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 about playing into. It's it's literally, and the funny thing is that most of your clients will have never even thought of this when they come to you, and so just asking these questions already presents you in a way that's very different from other photographers. So it's been whether or not you sell a single print, this process in and of itself has made us deliver better photographs that are more personalized to every single one of our clients. So I told our team, look, don't think about selling prints, think about delivering a better service because that's literally what this is. It's not selling of anything. So, so that's step number one. Now, while you're implementing and learning about this process, step number two, is as you're going through, because you're gonna have time before these clients that are coming to this new system actually come in for their design consultations. So in the meanwhile, step number two is to design out the product grouping that you wanna have. Design out the products that you want, get those products in the studio, get them into your home, get them wherever you're gonna be presenting, whether it's albums, whether it's wall art, whether they're frames, and get them up in places where they can see those examples. Then you're gonna go into the shoots, you're gonna talk about it in the shoots, and you're gonna invite them back immediately after within a week, within, you know, ideally a couple of days to kind of sit down and go through those images. So Scott, that's kind of the process is step one is building it into um, your, your initial meetings. So going forward, your clients are ready for it because your past clients is not where you're going to be making a dent here. Cool. Now, so the promo code for SLR premium um, guys, we have tons of people in here that are uh, premium members, Wes, Scott. We really thank you guys for your support, and they're always talking about how awesome the membership is. We want to create a platform from education to growing and sharing your work and getting critique on that to now a place where you're recognized. So I don't know if you guys have seen this, but let me just briefly show you this before we wrap this up. Um, I'm going to do a little screen share because tomorrow we're going to be doing is changing. Now we've implemented everything from premium to critique to awards. This is literally what we are becoming. So what you see here from our education in every arena of portraiture, we're basically covering, sorry, not every arena, we're covering life cycle portraiture. So engagement, maternity, mater, uh, sorry, engagement, wedding, <laughs> usually people have wedding photos before they have maternity photos, generally, generally. Uh, engagement, wedding, maternity, newborn, family, and we're also covering headshots as well because it's another thing that we do. This is the focus and breadth of our education and business education that will be coming is in this arena of life cycle photography. We're not really going to go into fashion and all the other stuff, landscapes, even though they're fun, we might include little bits of information here and there. It's not our focus. For those photographers, we have critique. This is the place where you upload images and you get critique on how you're improving. So as you are learning, we give you a platform where you can submit and people can go and mark up directly over these images and say, well, Shivy said, I do feel like there's a bit too much texture in skin, especially here. Hopefully this article will help. And she can actually link you to resources on where you can get guidance to retouch and so forth. Or, or you can use the one click and Fundy on that one. <laughs> the what? Or you can use the one click retouching right there on, on Fundy right there. There you go. This would be a perfect image for one click retouch. So, so this is a place to get feedback. And if the image is fantastic, we're building in a nomination system where people can nominate you to go directly to awards. And this is what we just launched is SR Lounge Awards, where we're showcasing and honoring the world's best photographers. So the entire website, the homepage is going to shift towards featuring great education, incredible images from the community, and those that are helping others to learn and grow by critiquing. So this is what's coming to, or this is what's available now on SR Lounge Premium. We want you guys to join up, um, and Shiv will link up that, uh, I want to thank Fundy for being here. Um, Fundy software has, has, Fundy Designer has literally changed the way that we've done business. Not, I mean, initially from the album design process, we've been using this for years now from the album design side. And now from the design side, we make a lot of money <laughs> with this program. And it's, I think that's honestly the best endorsement that I can give it 
is that we use it in a studio that shoots nearly a thousand client commissions a year and we make money off of this software. So, so it's one of those things where I can guarantee that you will get the results that you guys want and it's going to be worth what you're paying for. So, yeah. And you know, uh, it's, it's an investment that reaps rewards. If so, I guarantee you, if you learn how to not only use it to design, but also present to your client, even over Skype, it will pay for itself the very first time you present something to your clients. Absolutely. So anyway, I don't like to get too salesy. You guys can always, I, I do I, have, I think, I think I know where it is. Maybe I don't. A lot of people are asking about the A9. Would people like to see the A9? The A9 giveaway? We just posted the link. Uh, oh, I think right. we're still doing that giveaway. Let me see if it's, I think it's right around the corner here. Who wants to see the A9? Oh, you actually have the A9. I actually it's have the it. perfect time for yeah. you to grab I, it. I well, think I've changed my mind. I think I'm just going to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, hold on. Um, let me do the, uh, I'm going to post that link unless Shiv's already got it. Here we go. There's a link. If you guys want to do the, um, the giveaway. Oh, Shivy, you already did it. I'm slow. I'm no, slow. I think I lied. I think, I think, uh, Allie stole it probably. Uh, Wes, I think Allie has it. I don't, I don't see it here. I think she sold it on the open market. Probably. That probably would have gotten a good amount of money. Yeah. Fundy, you totally built it up oh, and let it down. She brought it back. She, we almost caught her trying to steal it. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 there it is. That's no big deal. Should I open it up? That's fine. If you want to, I don't care. It is on paper, a ridiculous camera. I hope. Um, yeah. And then I think, um, I think Brian asked if every purchase of Fundy comes with an A9. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that's happening. That's a great deal. Great deal. I'd like to buy ten, please, for resale. Yeah. <laughs> mm, there it is. Look at that. It's so small. It's so. Somebody was upset with us because it doesn't come with a lens, but it is a five thousand dollar camera we're giving away. So. Um, <laughs> please don't so, be too upset that we're not giving away a lens with it. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you can just take the cap off and shoot like that. Funny. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And then you just yell at it. What focal length you want? You like 50 millimeter click, click. And then it just works. <laughs> BTW quick side note before we end this, have you ever tried taking the lens off a mirrorless camera while it's on when you're shooting? Cause I do it all the time on my DSLR. I used to, when I got my first yeah. mirrorless camera, like a GH, three or GH2 yeah, yeah. or something like it that. Off. I took off the lens while it was on. And by the end of like two hours, there was so much dust caked on the sensor that like, I didn't know <laughs> what was happening. And I opened it up. I'm like, what is going on? The oh, entire thing just, is just yeah, lit with it's dust. on. It just collects dust because it's the electrified yes. basically. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. I learned about this later that when you have a mirrorless camera and the sensor is charged, it's basically a dust magnet. So okay. everybody okay. else, you're supposed to turn all of your cameras off when you're changing the lens. These are just, these I hope are, I didn't hear that. These are guidelines. <laughs> Speed limit is like a guideline. We recommend that you follow this type thing. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Fundy, thank you for coming in and joining. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, again, check the links for the video for all the discounts and everything that we've mentioned in the course. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. I'll actually, for once, look into the camera. All bye, right. guys. See you, bye. Can't wait to see, see you. Bye. Thanks, brother.